Do we find any prophet who is asking someone, seeking help from someone? And this chapter is called Al Anbiya, the prophets, and it gives you how those, it it gives you uh, glimpses about how those prophets were asking Allah alone. Ayub, when he had problem, he raised his, hand, his hands to Allah. Yunus, when he had problem, he raised his hands to Allah. He turned to Allah. Everyone. So where did people bring this? That if you have problem, you call the dead people. This is very important. Then, eventually, Allah said in the Quran, that is your nation. The word nation has great misconception in the Muslim, in the dictionary, of those activist Muslims today. I'm not talking about the layman people. I'm talking about those activist Muslims. They talk, they talk about the, the, the importance of the unity of the Ummah. And it's important to have the unity of the Ummah. But what is the Ummah you're talking about? To have unity between those who ask Allah alone, following their prophets, and to be united with those who ask someone beside Allah? That unity is fruitless. That unity is fruitless. That's why I wanted to um, mention this to, uh, to you today. Okay, so we start. Before the beginning of the lecture, I'd like that each one of you takes a piece of paper and a pen. Now this side I can see all of them doing this. This side I don't see except one person. Maybe they came lately. It is important that you have a, a pen and a paper. MashaAllah, the brothers have made good preparation for this. So, if you remember, each one of you remembers any doubt, any question that used to be given to you, knocking your head, giving you a headache, please, give your doubts to me. That's what I use, uh, uh, I do every week. Now, you can see me on uh, Pal Talk, in a room called Ansar Muhammad, Muhammad every, every Thursday at 9 o'clock p.m., Inviting all the Shia sheikhs, the big, the biggest one, come to me. Give me any doubt you have. Show me. Bring me anything you have. Alhamdulillah, I have no fear of giving refutation for any doubt that they used to be giving. I'm expert with this, without any pride. Alhamdulillah, this, this is the grace of Allah. Uh, an important presentation before we en enter the topic. The West had set a trap against the Islamic awakeness, which was taking its way just like waves. By reviving the false and the deviant cults in Islam in order to slow, if not possible, or if not stop, the Islamic awakeness, which I think it's taking its march towards the West. So they had to stop it. Rand Foundation, I think you've heard of Rand Foundation, they said those spots in the Middle East and elsewhere uh, which are hard to be controlled by us, which they may shackle us from taking advantage of their resources, it's good to create among them something which is called ideology, ideological fight. Fight of doctrines. So they said it. And it is being fulfilled. The Shah was doing good thing to the Americans. He was very good. He was obedient. He was not transgressor. Obedient boy. But why did they get rid of the, get rid of him? Why did they say the Shia Amama is more appropriate than you? He was doing a fine job for them. Yeah, but uh, he can't stop the Islamic awakeness. He can't do that. Well, this madhab has a great deal of history, it was very destructive to the Muslim Ummah. And the Shia never fought for the benefit of the Ummah, never, ever. They did not fight for the, for, for the benefit of the Ummah. The, the opposite is the truth. 
So uh, that's what happened, and uh, we find today as a result a lot of cults, and all of the cults you see today, Ash'aris, Mu'tazilis, every, they are supported by Rafidah. They're supported by them. Salah al-Din had to do something to stop the Shia uh, 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 confusing activity against the Ummah. Because he realized when the cross becomes intensive, strong, Shiaism becomes strong as well. So he had to fight the Fatimi state. And as soon as he got rid of the Fatimi state, he was able to get rid of the Crusaders. It was easy. I used to be, I'm expert today in Shiaism, but I was expert in, in Christianity. And I was a good person who, who is a good debater with Christians. I was supposed to be coming here to make a dialogue about Muslim, Christian dialogue, something like this. But why do I have now to leave Christianity aside and talk about this, this issue? Because of what I told you about Rand Foundation. They said, we should be making those people busy within themselves. And as a result, I had to deal with this case. So they made us busy from turning to the outsiders, inviting them for the truth. <clears throat> uh, some of you heard of uh, a man called Yasser al-Habib. Well, Habib means beloved one. Uh, Habib means beloved one. Well, I, I'm not, I have nothing to do against his family name because we're not allowed to ridicule their fam people's family name at all. But he's not a beloved person. I mean, truly he's not. Finally, alhamdulillah, I saw on his website, Al-Qatra, that he made it clear that the Book of Allah has changed. In his, in his website, Al-Qatra, and I have the link, he was asked and he said, the Sahaba changed the Qur'an. It's clear. No matter what justification you give it, you have made it clear that the Qur'an has changed. What is, the, what is the result? What would be the result of the a judgment for those who say that the Qur'an has changed? Except, I gave him fatwa that he is kafir with a degree of very good. Classification, very good. Why, did I, well, why didn't I say excellent? Because Anur al-Tabrasi, he had a book called Fasl Khitab Fi Ithbat Tahrif Kitab Rabbil Arbab. My mobile, new mobile should be switched off, but I forgot. <laughs> Um, do something to it uh, when it rings again. <laughs> okay, uh, because uh, Nuri Tabrasi, he has he is an author of a book called Fasl Khita Fi Ithbat Tahdif Kitab Rabb Al Arbab. The proof. Okay, let me answer. Because it's, it, it is important, a bit important from Saudi Arabia. Um, yes, he said uh, the title is proving that the book of the Lord of Lords have been changed. So this one deserves excellent in being kafir. Excellent kafir. But Yasir Habib, very good kafir. He's less. I'm sorry, it's, it's very important. Assalamu alaikum. I'm going to give you a Okay. Let me now switch. It's time just to switch it off. Don't buy this telephone. Don't buy this telephone. Okay, so he made it clear that the Book of Allah is changed. The companions changed the Qur'an. Hmm, today. Let's remember three verses, very important verses. فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِحْتَدَوْا If they believed in what you companions believed in, then they are guided. Do you remember the title, Then I Was Guided? Yeah. Does this match what Allah said in the Qur'an? <laughs> the Qur'an says, if they believed in what you companions believed in, then they are guided. That's number one.